Network theory is one of the most exciting and dynamic fields of science in 21st century. Networks are everywhere, from metabolites that fuel our body to social networks that shape our life. This module has been designed as an introduction to theory behind networks, where we explore graph theory as the basic of our language. We learn about network structure topology, we go on by learning about different network properties and models, we talk about a scale-free network, surprising a small world phenomena, and biological network. While the material of this module is mathematical in nature, we shall see in the reminder of the course that all of the concepts recalled here arise in the real-life network. Furthermore, the notation introduced in this module will enable us to discuss the various network encounters throughout the course in a uniform and consistent manner. The basic mathematical concept used to model networks is a graph. So let's see what is a graph. Look at this picture. What do you see? True, a set of points and lines joining them. They are graphs. Graphs present the key concepts of discrete mathematics and formally the points are called graph vertices or network nodes and link between them are called edge. Therefore, graph G defined as a set of vertices denoted by V or by VG and a set of edges denoted by E or EG. Graphs are easy to draw and understand from a picture and easy to process by computer programs too. Two vertices are called adjacent or neighbors if they join by an edge. An edge between vertices U and V is denoted by bracket UV or shortly UV. So a graph can be described either by listing the vertices and edges, as has been written here, or with a nice picture. Which one do you like more? An edge is a pair. A directed edge is an order pair. It is represented as parentheses v1, v2, while a directed edge is an unordered pair, where there is no orientation, and it's represented as bracket v1, v2. And more terminology. An edge of a graph whose end vertices are the same vertex called loop. An edge is incident with a vertex if that vertex is one of its ends. So let's look at graph G1. V2 and V3 are adjacent. E2 is incident with V2. And E6 is a loop. The graphs or networks that we encounter can be divided in two broad classes based on their edge type, directed graphs and undirected graphs. Undirected graph consists of a non-empty set of vertices denoted by V and E, a set of undirected edges. Directed graph is a set of vertices V and set of directed edges. For instance, G1 is undirected graph, while G2 is directed graph. In biology, transcriptional regulatory networks and metabolic networks would usually be modeled as directed graphs. For instance, in transcriptional regulatory networks, nodes would represent genes with edges denoting the interaction between them. This would be a directed graph because if gene A regulates gene B, then there is a natural direction associated with the edge between the corresponding nodes starting at A and finishing at B. Whereas the protein-protein interaction networks are typically modeled as undirected graphs, in which nodes represents protein and edge represents interactions. Later in this module and others, we talk more about these networks and their properties. It is a custom to refer to some basic special graphs by descriptive names. We review the most famous ones. The first one is the cycle graph. A cycle graph of length n is a graph consisting of n vertices joined in a cyclic fashion with n edges. The number of vertices should be more than 3. The cycle denoted by Cn, where n is the number of vertices, or it can be number of edges as they are equal. The next one is the graph path. The path of length n looks like a line with knots in between. It has n plus 1 vertices joined consequently with n edges. The third one is the complete graph on n vertices, as its name suggests all pairs forming edges. 
a number of nodes should be more than one to be called a complete graph. Bipartite graph is a graph that has two parts and edges join nodes from one part to other part. A complete bipartite graph, CMN, has M plus N vertices in two parts and edges join all the MN pairs coming from different parts. The last two graph classes are wheels and N cubes. Wheels denoted by WM is a graph formed by connecting a new single vertex to all vertices of a cycle CN. The last kind of graph we look at is N cube or hypercube. It's shown by QN and is a graph whose vertices are the 2 power N binary string and two vertices are adjacent if and only if the string differs in exactly one coordinate. The degree of a vertex V in a graph G is the number of edges of G incident with V. A graph is deregular if all its vertices have the same degree D. For directed graph, we can refrain our definition and divide it to two, in degree and out degree. In degree is the number of edges for which V is a terminal vertex, and out degree is the number of edges for which V is initial vertex. If we write the degree of vertices of a graph in a sequence of natural numbers, then we have the degree sequence or the score of the graph. In abstract graphs, their vertices usually have no names, and so we have to somehow sort their degree sequence. The particular order is not important. If you know the degree sequence of a graph, what you can say about the number of edges in the graph? It can be proved that the number of edges in a simple undirected graph is twice the sum of its degree sequence. The handshaking theorem can be used to find out if a given sequence cannot be a graph. Why the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4 cannot be a degree sequence of a graph? Yes. The sum is not even, so it cannot be 